What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fires, the man, Eric Sheet Tabor. We're going to be talking through tonight's MLB slate. Um, yeah, it's been a rough, rough start to the season for me, uh, for MLB. I, I cannot win anything. I've bubbled like every freaking big guy in tournament. I just didn't just, you know, that moment where you feel like, why am I even doing this early in the year, especially playing one lineup and next thing and some other ones, it's going to happen. But just a little frustrating, uh, ready to move on to today. Sheets, any general thoughts, how you've been doing? And uh, yeah, let me know. What I cashed doing. in that 1650 the last night. On oh, Fandle, beautiful. Which was nice. I played um, I played Alcantara at, at pitcher, um, which was good enough. Um, he got the got the quality start and, uh, you know, 35 points there. And I had the Pirates, including Brian Reynolds as my hero. And then I had a, I was in decent shape going in. I had like the big four, the big four Dodgers ready to go. And I was, uh, and I was, I had, I had delusions of, of, of doing something before that game started, but then like other games started to blow up. And then I'm like, all right, no big deal. These four Dodgers. The, Dodgers, the, Dodgers, the Dodgers hit though last night. Hang, hang on a minute. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm just asking. I'm, just yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, build, I'm, I'm building drama. Okay. So, sorry, so, sorry, sorry, so sorry. then, so then the other, then, uh, then other teams started to hit. I'm like, okay, at least those four Dodgers are going to just do well. For, I had literally, I had, I had the I had the best players. I had I I, I had Mookie. I had uh, Trey. I had Muncy and uh, and uh, the other good one. Whatever. Uh, one two four. Tre Trey, M Mookie, Muncy, and uh, anyway, I forgot. I even forget who it was. Um, but uh, uh, you know, after a little while, I was starting to go on tilt. I mean, like freaking. Bruno San Martino just came in for his freaking five middle innings and just mowed everybody down. Like, what, what's going on? I've got Mookie striking out on bad pitches. i got nobody doing anything. And fortunately, I was still, like, kind of, like, on the bubble and everybody else needed the same Dodgers pretty much, so it wasn't that big of a deal. And finally, like, when they, they, when they when the seventh and the eighth came, they just they finally got to everybody. <laughs> and they finally and – and, and the, the Dodgers finally did it for me. So, um, you know, I didn't cash for that much because it was chalky or whatever. But, hey, whenever you, whenever you have a – play the big one like that, it's, 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 a, it's the first thing you want to do is make sure you cash that thing. Yeah. Um, so I, so I did and, uh, made up, well, then make up for it, but uh, the draft, the draft Kings, uh, draft Kings was not as good. I had Otani in my main lineup over there and I kept on shuffling. I kept on saying, do I want Bueller, Otani, Otani, Musgrove, whatever it is. And, uh, and almost, I up, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And I ended up going with Otani and, uh, I also had the KC. So that was no bargain either. And I played, I played some Yankees also. So DraftKings was certainly not a lot of fun, but at least I had that FanDuel thing that kept me, uh, kept me afloat. Nice. Nice. Well, glad to hear it. Let's move on to today. Yeah, let's go. Um, all right, let's jump into it. Uh, let's start off with the Let first screen. Player screen up. And so I think it's an interesting slate. I, I well, in this, in, in, talk about making, uh, making, a, a big slate small. I think you could do it from with the pitchers, but not so much with the hitters. Like I have like five pitchers that I like um, out of 22 possibles. And I th I'm pretty sure the way I'm going to handle it. Um, but, but hitting is, is, I think there's a lot of different things you could do and it's a huge slate. So it's uh, I'll be, I'll be interested to know what you think of all of this. Yeah. Yeah. We'll go through it. Um... All right, let's do it. Uh, first game, uh, New York, Boston, Baltimore. This is going to be one of the one of the chalky spots on the night, but there's a few of them. Um, I am going to have a hard time not playing the Yankees tonight, even with the recent struggles. Um, that's my first look is they are one of my top stacks. And I think you can make a very good argument for Jordan Montgomery, but I'm not going to be playing Jordan Montgomery. Uh, that's where I stand in this game, basically. Yeah, I mean, always these Camden games are worth uh, are worth uh, are worth targeting in general, and the Yankees going to Camden is, is, is seems like a good idea, and and targeting Jordan Lyles also seems like a good idea. So all these things kind of make the Yankees uh, a decent uh, decent team to target. I don't have them like that much ahead of anybody else, honestly, but uh, they certainly right off the bat's a good way to get you good way to get your slate going. That's for sure. And yeah. I have literally no interest in uh, in either of the pitchers. All right. Well, let's uh, move on to the next one. Uh, Oakland, Toronto, uh, Dalton Jeffries and Russ Stripling. Uh, it looks like Toronto would be a very good stack. So these are right off the bat, I think probably my two favorite stacks of the night. We could argue really? with the Dodgers too. So I, I really, really like Toronto tonight. Uh, I think Oakland is terrible. And I think that anybody that they have and then Dalton Jeffries are going to try and throw out there. I just think this is a good spot for Toronto. So I'm going to be high on the Yankees in Toronto. Yeah, I, th I think that I'm going to be uh, – I think I might end up ch be chasing you down, uh, hopefully, near the end of the night. 
Um, I know, I think you're going to put, I think, I think if you go with those, you're definitely going to put up a good score. And I, I, I might be attempting to track you down later, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, but I definitely like both those. I listen, I also have, I have no interest in stripling, no interest in, uh, Daquan Jeffries or whoever he is. Um, actually he had a good start in his first start, I think, but, uh, I, I'm not, I'm not playing anybody in Toronto <laughs> if, uh, if, uh, if I can avoid it. So, uh, I'm with you. I like Toronto a decent amount, uh, and, uh, neither pitcher. Gotcha. Um, all right. Why don't you start us off with Tampa Bay, Chicago? Yeah. So let's hear. So here we go. So I think that there are four, wait, four. I have like three, I kind of spend ups type pitchers, one kind of middling and one cheapo. I have Cease as one of the spend ups, but, but I actually have him third um, as far as my favorites. I, I, I prefer, I, well, it's, I mean, I prefer Peralta and Rod- Rodon to, to, to him, but uh, I definitely like him. Uh, it's not, I'm not used to seeing 10 2 on him, but you know, in this slate, there isn't a, there isn't a lot um, that has that kind of upside. Um, but I, I, I do, we'll get to them, but I think Peralta and Rodon do. But anyway, I definitely think Cease is in a, in a very, very small list of pitchers that could put up a good score. And so I like that. Um, I didn't, don't think I quite got to many, much of the hitting. Let me just double check. Um, no, not real. I have to go pretty far down on my list to get to, to get to either Tampa or Chicago here. Um, yeah, I think Cease is fine. Um, don't really like anything much in this game. Um, well, what, well, let's, we'll talk about Cease for a second. Do, do you like him as a top guy or is he like, you like me, do you have him behind those other guys or where are you with Cease in general? I don't know who the other guys are. I don't have Cease oh. that interesting, uh, personally, but he's fine. Uh, I don't think the 10-2 for on a bigger slate is a little different than what we were doing the other slates. Uh, I believe he threw, what, like 60-something or 70-something pitches the first time out. I got to double-check. Maybe it was a little more because I don't have it in front of me. He's got a good good K rate. Uh, you have a team that can strike out, but also a competent offense. So he's, he's fine. I don't have any issues with him. He's not one of my top guys. Okay, interesting. Um, so in the next game, this is, this is where I have uh... – I, I definitely have interest in Rodon. Uh, I, I have him as one of my, uh, one of my top spend ups, him and Peralta. I'll go, we'll get there, I guess, but I don't know how you want to handle it, but uh, I, I do definitely like Rodon. Um, I, you know, please I don't know, man, 6,500 is pretty cheap and he's not that bad, but uh, I, I don't know if I'm going to get there today. Um but I don't have him as bad or anything like that, but I, I, I definitely like Rodon and then hitting wise, uh, San Francisco. Sure. Um, yeah. I mean, they're behind the top guys and then they're behind the pivots to the top guys also. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to get there for me. It's basically Rodon and, and no hitting. Gotcha. Um, yeah, that's, I'm, I'm pretty much the same. I don't mind the San Francisco stack. Uh, but I don't, I don't think it's probably, it's probably not what I'm going to do. So I'm, I'm probably, I'm probably more just in a Rodon or nothing in this game. And I don't particularly feel excited um, about Rodon either. If you want to know the truth, uh, just really shying away from some of these top guys, some of these top guys today, but uh, the, the Indians have hit everybody so far. Uh, Rodon, He's really good. Like, I do think he's, I mean, he's on my list, but I don't feel like excited about a 40% owned 9,800 starting pitcher these days. Okay. Makes sense to me. All right. Let's go on to the next. Why don't you start off off in the next one? Yeah. The angels are one of my top stacks of the night. Um, uh, and, and you're going to, you're going to, you're going to yell at me about this because I, I know it's probably usually bad for him to, to stack in bullpen games. Right. And you, you always, you always, not always, but you, you often, kind of remind me of that. And I'm looking at, I see that there's a, an opener and a, and a, and a reliever. Um, I don't know if that is your traditional type of, of uh, bullpen game, but, but currently I do have uh, the angels, one of my, one of my top stacks. And again, it's, it's going to be like the new, usual guys, you know, that's the thing. That's why I'm probably not going to go five man or anything like that. It's going to be like the, the Otani's, the, the Trout's, the, 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 the Walsh's and the, uh, uh, the fourth guy and the Rendon's, you know, those are going to be the guys I'm probably going to play. Um, so I definitely like that. Um, and I'm, I don't, I'm not going to play our Detmers and I didn't quite, you know, Texas keeps putting up zillions of runs. 
Um, but I, I, I didn't have them targeted today, though. Yeah, I think both these offenses are definitely uh, on the list. I don't feel overly excited about either of them for some reason. And Texas may be putting up runs, but I, I don't know if they've won anything for anybody. <laughs> um, right. No, not for me. Um, obviously, Seeger, um, even in a lefty-lefty, have no, means nothing to me. Um, Garver, Simeon. Those would be my favorite players in the game, and they're all on that side. And then to just to just just to play twenty percent owned hitters when the slates get bigger is not the most fun thing to do, unless you're going to really into the stack. So I, I'm not going to probably play the 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 really really high owned Mike Trout and and uh, and Shohei Otani. I would rather spend the money on the slightly lower owned Yankee guys um, and the I think slightly lower owned Blue Jays. Yeah, I think that's just where I, where I stand. I do love Rendon's price, though, I have to say. 4,300, it seems very, very reasonable. So he's the one one I have the most interest in. All right, KC Detroit. So here are two, uh, two kind of cheaper pitchers that I think are both kind of interesting. Um, Brad Keller is, is, is showing up as the, 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 the more attractive of the two of them. Uh, I have him as a very, uh, very playable SP2. Um, and Scooble, I... I don't know whether this is the guy that you invented. There was I keep getting all these Detroit guys confused because one guy that you totally invented, um, and he had like some big games. I don't know if this was this was the same guy. He but, had some um, big games. Yeah. So so I, I guess I'll get, get your opinion on him. Uh, however, I do still have Kansas City as kind of like that secondary uh, stack to kind of try. So um, I'm curious to hear what you think of Scuba, what you think of Kansas City, what you think of Keller. I think this is a you know this, these are some decent decisions here. Yeah, not, not a lot of interest in anything in this game to me. Oh, um, wow. Okay. Uh, I think Keller is uh, sure. Um, there's better pitchers, cheaper. Um, Scooble, sure. It could 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 get on the right, right side of variance. I have a little bit of interest in the KC, some of the KC bats, like especially Merrifield and Perez, but not a whole lot of interest overall in the in the game. I do like Merrifield, though. Um, that's pretty much it for that one. So on to uh, St. Louis and Milwaukee, where we have Peralta and Mikolas. Um, tell you what, Milwaukee's run projection, have they hit their run total yet this year? <laughs> <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like they're projected to score all these runs every night. And I'm just I'm sort of half joking here, but um, yeah, yeah they, were supposed, mean, they, were, they were supposed to light up Chicago every night. They didn't. <laughs> right. I know. And then Baltimore. Yeah. I mean, all right. Uh, Peralta. So. I think Peralta definitely is in the list. I just feel weird about spending all the way up for, for any of these guys, to be honest with what I've been seeing, especially cause like, I don't know. I'm just looking for leashes, I guess. And like, it became more and more clear to me, like I was in FanDuel, the other one was the play, but it was like so clear that, that Bueller was the right guy to go with. Like, you know what I mean? And we, we sort of think about it and Musgrove, I mean, Musgrove and Otani made sense too, but at the high ownership, if we're playing it for safety or we're playing it for ups, like I just can't figure out this whole early season pitching thing. And so it feels unnatural to just pay 10 K for a guy who's probably going to throw 75 pitches, um, maybe 80. It's fine. I don't feel excited about either anyone in this game either. I know that's, which is really good. I'm making the slate small. I mean, I, I don't yeah. really have a lot of interest in a lot of things in this slate. Okay. As, as, as we talked about when we would do our football, uh, football uh previews you keep i kept on saying i don't like this i don't like this you're like well dude who are you playing i guess we're gonna get to it one of these days you're like Go to well i already started off with my two favorite stacks so that's true that's that's where i'm at and, and i and i just don't like i'm not saying i won't have any of these pieces and i'll be i'll be around it live for to talk through what i actually am doing but i don't know man like i just feel like it's i don't feel overwhelmingly excited i do feel like i really like a few games on this slate and I don't feel like I love the pitching, which makes me feel like, why do I need to spend 10 K for the guy who's going to give me the safety points? Or if I want those safety points, like, I don't know. It just, it just feels like a, like a hard path for Freddie Peralta to, to have like, I don't know, 20 plus fantasy points tonight. Um, it's, it's definitely doable. They have a righty heavy lineup, so he should be, he should be okay. But so, do the, I mean, the Cubs are terrible and, you know, you had 10 fantasy points against them in his opener. Sure. He might be extended a little bit more. It's hard to get really excited about it. Speaking of uh, of the Cubs, um, uh, Cubs are at 
Cubs Colorado, uh, as usual, Coors uh, Field is going to generate ownership. And as usual, I mean, I would assume that that sharp player is going to keep playing marquee. <laughs> um, maybe, maybe they won't, though, because of the because it's in Coors. But I certainly think it's a, he's a very, very strong play. Um, he pitches well no matter where he pitches, not, including against the Dodgers this year. And um, he's only uh, – Whatever he is, he's only seventy nine hundred against a team that you just you know identified as not being you know not being he was, Ernie Banks is not batting for them. You know what I mean? Like this is it's not the greatest team in the world. And sure, it's in Colorado, but you know what? They're going to be owned just because it's in Colorado. And I think Marquis is a very you know obviously very legitimate uh, legitimate pitcher on this slate. Uh, Stroman, I'd be interested to get your opinion on because um, I, I feel as though I don't know is he the is Stroman the guy that's gonna that keeps it low, or is he the guy that keeps it high? I, I remember you, there was doesn't, something doesn't, doesn't, doesn't give up doesn't give up power, right? So so maybe he could be like ridiculously sneaky, but he's nine k. You know, I can't, I, I can't, yeah, no, I can't just play Marquee. There's no reason to play him. Nobody's okay. playing Marquee anyway. Really? Um, okay. Yeah, I don't think so. I, I, and I'll obviously, play. and obviously, both hitting environment, uh, both hitting both, both stats are obviously you know they're they project well, whatever. But I'd rather play Colorado. Yeah, I'm not interested in either of the stacks. Uh, I don't know if I'll be using any hitters from this game. Uh, I will play marquee. The only way I would play hitters in this game is if we get near lock and it looks like, I mean, there's, they're going to be low owned. Okay. <sighs> At this ownership, uh, the wind is blowing in. It's supposed to be blowing in 10 to 15 miles an hour from left field, which makes it even less appealing. You have two good pitchers out there, but the weird part is like, I don't think anybody's projecting to play the pitchers or the hitters here. So I don't know. I, I, this is an interesting spot because I, I do like Marquis quite a bit. Um, even like you said, even Stroman is fine. But at the same time, like we have an unknown Coors, which is like the one time I will ever want to attack it. So maybe that's how I could see this getting changing for me. This slate is I, I may end up getting getting onto this game if just that there's nobody on it when it comes lock. And and it really is possible that there won't be that many people on it because. I mean, it's rare in Chicago to have neither team. What are they? The, the fifth highest total on the slate, the fourth, high, fifth high, fourth highest total on the slate, close with Texas and LA. Um, and Chicago's like ninth um, or eighth. Uh, that's interesting. I, I just think it's interesting to play Coors when nobody's going to. So my original thought was Marquee, but if you're going to have an unknown stack at Coors, that's the time I usually try and jump on a little bit. All right, Atlanta at San Diego. So now, now welcome, welcome to uh, Mackenzie Gore night, right? So, yeah. so uh, um, I can you can talk more about him than I can. I just saw his projection and you know it's overall stuff, so I just presume he's a really, really good prospect. You could talk to him about it when I, when I get done with it, but um, he's going to project to be you know extremely, extremely uh, viable. He's, he's going to project to be extremely popular, I would imagine, and um, yeah, certainly can't can't argue too much against it. However, uh, I will say that probably supposed to play some Atlanta stacks um, just for just 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 to be a pain in the ass. Um, uh, Atlanta can still hit; they still have can put up to double digit runs in multiple games, which we've seen. And uh, if you get a forty percent on pitcher plus um, that you could have a good hitting team against, um, I think that in baseball you're just kind of supposed to do that. So. That, 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 that's my, my opinion on this game. Gore is going to project probably is the best point per dollar pitcher. I mean, definitely is the best point per dollar pitcher. And uh, it's up to you whether to play him or fade him or both. Well, yeah. I mean, what I'm trying to figure out is you have the fifth overall pick on the other side who just had his one of his, you know, he hasn't, he hasn't pitched that much. Fifth overall pick a few years. I mean, it was five years ago, but again, that's, in baseball, that's not that long. Um, this guy just had a pitch to gem on, on, was it opening day or the second game? Kyle, Kyle Wright. Kyle Wright. So that's interesting to me. So I, I do like Gore. I think he's going to be a stud. Um, it's interesting that Kyle Wright would be so low owned. So this is sort of that's what I'm doing with my pricing today is like, I, there's so much value in hitting. I kind of want to take the safety and I'm sort of struggling with this decision every day. Um, do I take the pitchers that are at the top? If they have the ceiling, I want to do it, but without an out, an outlandish performance from, I mean, look, even Kershaw, we were right. Right. Like I said, that I'm just worried yeah. about how much they're, I think they're letting throw 70 some odd pitches. And that's it. And I honestly think they would have pulled him the second he gave up a hit, even before that. Um, even if it was at 72 pitches or 73, they just they just let him go seven innings because of that. And they pulled him after 80 pitches with a perfect game going. Anyway, these these guys don't have you don't need the leash or anything for these guys. And these guys are most likely most of the time they're going to end up in the same range as the top spend ups uh, in these early season games. So 
I'm sort of interested in both of both of the pitchers, to be honest, but I definitely have an edge leaning lean towards Gore. And, and as, with regard to Atlanta, I'm still going to trust that San Diego has, you know, I mean, they had the second best bullpen or the best bullpen, depending on who you talk to, was them in Tampa Bay last year. Um, oh, in Milwaukee. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't want any any stacks in this game. You know, this would be such an ultimate freaking Bobby play, just to play both pitchers in this game. Wouldn't that be funny on a, on this big stage? That'd be amazing. And you could totally do it. And and then, you know what you do? You know what you do? That... You play freaking like like Aaron Judge, Vladimir Guerrero, you know, all the big spend-ups from the freaking Toronto Yankees put up through these home runs, and you sit there like that and just root for the wind to blow in San Diego. Right. To just freaking just be done with it. You know, it's like <laughs> No, no, it's but the, here's the only thing though, is like that used to be more, you could argue whether it's more or less viable, but it's something we should talk about, about just sort of the way we think about pitchers. It used to not matter because you have the guys strike, you know, you're playing for strikeouts and all that. The four points didn't mean a lot. The four points means a ton now because it's really hard to get a pitcher to get a win. Starting pitchers are not getting wins hardly ever. Like if you look at it, it's like, what is it? Probably 25% of them or something or 20% of the ones that are qualified or the 20% of them qualify. Basically nobody's mm-hmm. pitching like more than four innings. And if they pitch five, it's often a tie game. Like there's like no, there's nobody getting wins hardly. So I think those four points actually do matter when you find the guy who can get the win. That's so it's, it's I don't know which way, which way is, which way, I don't know. I can argue both sides of the conversation. It's, it's just tricky to me. Um, what do you think about this, uh, the Seattle game? Um, not much. I mean, I'm not playing either of these pitchers. Um, uh, you 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 tend to not play. I, I, I hate to when I whenever I say that I don't want you to think I always you know you, I think you always no play no them. no no I just but I you just, but you but you play Odorizzi more than the field. Let's put it that way. Um, whenever he's like five percent, you'll maybe have ten. You're always a little bit more on Odorizzi mm-hmm. than the field is. So uh, I, I would guess get your opinion on there. But um, I don't know. Seattle's Seattle's not bad, man. <laughs> no, they're not. They're not. They're really they, not. They're not bad at all. Uh, I wouldn't attack them. I I probably just avoid this whole game. Feels like an avoiding game to me. I don't mind if you want to mix in any sort of pieces. Like I'm always a fan of Mitch Haniger and he always is pretty low owned because he messes in with all that outfield and everybody wants to stack their outfields and all that. But like, I have like guys who stand out to me. They're, they're sort of the same theme on this, but like the guys who stood out to me price-wise and things throughout the, the slate are Rendon, Merrifield and Haniger. Just because I know they're, they're three guys who are all elite level players who no one ever plays with, with Hanager and, and Merrifield, you get the, the stolen base upside. Um, so that's the only thing I really had from this game. And then we get to the other one. Um, boy, who was my other pitcher? I thought I had another pitcher that I'm don't not seeing on the board here. Who was my other guy? You know, I think it, I think it is. I think I did have Radon, but I didn't want to like overly commit to it. I think Radon is actually the, the other ace of the slate all right go ahead sorry shoots uh dodgers and cincinnati feels like a pretty good spot for the dodgers <laughs> yeah that's 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 what i'm doing <laughs> Can we do it should we do it for the first time this year hey what? Google, what will be the temperature be at dodger stadium at 7 p.m the temperature in dodger stadium on the 15th at 7 p.m is predicted to be 62 degrees Ooh, not ideal not ideal we, we always hope for that 70 number yeah but, uh Whatever. you don't remember what we, we did that like over here type day last year yeah. Hey, Alexa, what's the, what's the weather in, uh, yeah. Yeah. What's, yeah, the, so weather, what's the weather in Chinatown? Yep. <laughs> um, which is really st- silly for me to be asking because I'm literally looking at the window at it. Um, it's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's see. Hold on. Okay. All right. So I, I love the Dodgers. I, it's just going to be a matter of, can you deal with the ownership? And for me, if I can, if I can find a way to get like, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm going to try and use them as a secondary stack, which I often do with teams that I just feel like are going to be too high owned. Um, I can argue whether that's right or wrong. The only thing is you could do that wraparound stack again. Luck should be back in the lineup tonight. Bellinger, they hate and still have him at 2.8 K. Um, he's a, I mean, I even, even in batting at the bottom of the order, I still think he's like a one-off candidate. I don't really care. It's just, he's the most elite level player at this price range. I know he's had a rough year last year, but the guy, <laughs> the guy's been one of the best players in baseball. If you take a whole his whole career, um, you know, wrapped up. So Bellinger is not going to be different, though. Um, Justin Turner, Gavin Lux, Will Smith, those are your low owned guys from the Dodgers. So take that for what you will. But I do love the Dodgers. And there's a part of me that wants to give Gosselin, Gonsolin a chance here because they didn't let him go very far his first outing. He wasn't pitching well. 
I, I could see him having like a weird outlier performance, but probably not going to do it tonight. Just going to throw that out there. So that's where I'm at on this one. How about you, Sheets? Yeah, I'll take the Dodgers. I don't know. <laughs> oh, simple as that. I don't know. Give me, give me, I'll take, I'll take the Dodgers for 400, Alex. I mean, like, you know, that's, it's, uh, sounds good to me. Um, now, in fairness, I mean, it's not like I have them laying over the field or anything like that. Uh, so, so if you tell me that they're going to be extremely high owned, uh, I'm not going to just, just completely jam them. Um, uh, I, I didn't have them as the same type of, of massive ownership. Uh, uh, yeah, I did. Sorry. They have the highest run total on the slate. Yeah. I Every mean, that happens is always going to be ownership. I, I look, if, if you're getting, if I'll get, if I can get Colorado at maybe half, Yep. Oh, you could, get, you could probably get Colorado less than half. And, I mean, and that's that's probably what I'd end up doing, actually. Yeah, I think you could. I think you can definitely. I think. I mean, I don't. And it's very early projections, but the projections are so bad for everybody in Colorado and Chicago that they're not going to be there. But the one thing is, you know, it is blowing in the wind in Colorado. Just keep that in mind. You have two really good pitchers, mm-hmm. but at the same time, like maybe we just throw that out when the, when we have the situation where we can play them low on now. Will they be low on by the time Locke comes around? Maybe not. We'll talk about that at 6 Eastern. But for right now, I do think that's an interesting way to go. So, I mean, my, my favorite stacks today are the Dodgers, Yankees, and Toronto. Um, again, I always feel good. Even if, no matter who's pitching on the other side, I always feel good just saying that out loud. You know what I mean? You feel like you've got some upside there no matter what because you've got right. these monster hitters. Um, but uh, but, the, but the, the pivot stack to me is the Chicago – I can't believe I'm saying it's a pivot stack, but Chicago and, and, and Colorado both are, would be my pivot stacks. And I think right now, um, assuming Vlad plays, I think I would lean – it's really close to me with Toronto and New York. I think I, – I, you know how I love to pick on Jordan Lyles. I think I might have to pick, the, pick, pick, pick on Jordan Lyles <laughs> a little bit ahead of, of picking on the uh, Jeffries. But uh, I, I really like all three of those stacks a ton, and that's why I sort of breeze through the other stuff because I just wanted to focus on my, my the stacks that I like. And for what it's worth, uh, Rendon, Merrifield, Hanniger, Rodon – and Bellinger, I'm not Rodon. Um, no, sorry, I wrote Rendon twice. Rendon, Merrifield, Hanniger, Bellinger are my favorite like one-offs that I think won't be crazy on except for Bellinger. And Gore, Wright, Marquis are my favorite pitchers. With uh, I'm sorry, Gore, Gore, Marquis, Rodon are my favorite pitchers with Wright and Seas and Peralta as other guys I'm considering. I would add Keller into that list. Um, and You're playing with fire, buddy. You're playing with fire. I love it. Yeah. Well, he just doesn't really strike anyone out. So it's always weird. He's not like, really playing with fire. I'll just take my 12. I mean, I don't know. He did. He did. He had a great game last time out against the, the, the Cleveland who scores 10 runs every night. So who knows? I'll take 12. Okay. All right. I like it. Um, And uh, I'm probably going to end up at the end of the day. I'll probably do something different in my, in my main lineup than the Dodgers. Now that I think about it, I'm just, I'm just going to, I, you know, it's, that's it's what's, fun. I agree. <laughs> I agree that they're going to be owned, but I just want to say that they always end up when they're at home less owned on bigger slates than people think. That's fair enough. Remember, we've and they also, you know, they're the, they're the they, they aren't they aren't the highest scoring team, but that, I believe last year they were the second highest fantasy producing team because of the power, and then they got the Turner and and Betts combination for speed. So, um, all right. Well, this was good, Sheets. Um, guys, good luck tonight. I will be around at 6 Eastern. We will talk a little NBA as well, which I'll have ready. And uh, let's make some money tonight. Sounds good.